Welcome to Bitcoin for Humans. <laughs> okay, today we're going to look at fairness in the economy uh, through the lens of the Cantillon effect. Now, the Cantillon effect states that those closer to the supply of new money will benefit more than the regular person when new money is introduced into the system. This is important because back in 2008, prior to the financial crisis, there used to be $800 billion of base money in the, in the world, in the US system, which is really the global economy at, at its base. Um, that, that's ballooned now to over, I think, about eight and a half trillion, and it, it's, it's just trending upwards. <laughs> So there's been a lot of new money come in. So it'd be good to look at like, well, what happens to the distribution of that? Because it doesn't go out fairly. And the, the example we're going to use to explore that is Monopoly. And we're going to say that there's, there's, there's three people playing Monopoly. There's, there's myself, there's Steve, and there's Rich. And as it happens, I'm good friends with Steve. And I'm not that good a friend with Rich. Now, this particular game of Monopoly has one extra rule. And that rule is that I'm going to give myself a thousand dollars every turn to distribute as I see fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the first turn. I'm going to get a thousand dollars. I might feel a bit guilty about keeping it all. So I'll just keep five hundred dollars to myself and I'll give five hundred to, to old Steve here. And then the next turn I do the same again. And on the third turn, I think oh, I should even it up. So I but I don't. I just keep it for myself and give some to Steve. Now. I think what you'll see play out in that game, and I'm sure we can all imagine this, is Reg is going to get a bit pissed off. Like, me and Steve are going to whip around the board and we're just going to buy everything that we land on and we're not going to care because we can afford everything. Like, we've got this new money that's coming from everywhere. We haven't earned it in any way, but we're going to use it to buy up all the properties, which in turn is going to push up the prices because we're going to buy them, we're going to put houses on, we're going to put hotels on, and Reg is going to have a very expensive game and he's going to really struggle to get along. <laughs> um... And that analogue plays out in the real world. So as we say, we went from a situation of $800 billion of money to $8.5 trillion of money, so like 10 xing the money supply. You know, you might ask yourself whether your, your salary and the price of your house and the price of your car and everything you own went up the corresponding 10x. Perhaps it did, perhaps it didn't. But if it didn't, it might be why you don't feel quite as well off as where you were back in 2008. But more importantly, for a lot of people, that money went into the system and became available to them. So when we look at something like inflation, we can see that if I get new money handed to me, now I have an opportunity to use that money before prices adjust. So I would go into the market, I would buy something that pushes up the price of that good or service. So this is what's playing out. Now, this is important because as a, a regular old Joe like myself, you're probably not right next to the, the Federal Reserve. You know, like if you were JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs, you'll find you do very well in this situation. Um, likewise, if you're BlackRock or something like that, who's going to benefit a lot from new money coming into the system, um, there is a flow on effect into the middle class where assets get pushed up. So this is why house prices go through the roof. It's why scarce assets and stocks have been on a run for the past 10 years. It's probably very little to do with um, actual growth in the economy and a little bit more to do with growth in the money supply. So, all right, I hope you find that useful. And if there's any questions about the, the Cantillon effect and like how it, how it impacts society, then just give me a shout and let's, let's start a conversation. All right, thanks very much. Bye-bye.